Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. Father in heaven, we thank you for a beautiful day here on the, on the beach this morning. And Lord, we just pray that as this new year starts, Lord, that you would um, use Pastor Izzy now to speak to each one of us. Lord, we just want your guidance and your direction and your will to be done in our life. And we ask mm-hmm. that now in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Well, guys, we're in 1 Corinthians chapter 9. If you'll turn there with me this morning, we're going to continue what we've been looking at in the scripture. This week, we get to kick off the year. Now, last week, um, up at the house, we did the first half of 1 Corinthians 9. And we saw the, the heart of Paul expressed as he explained that he was a, a, a man preaching the gospel with, um, personally, my hat's off to him. He, he said he never, if you, if you study scripture, did Paul ever take up an offering for himself? No. He had some offerings that were sent to him while he was in jail. We have one, one record in one of the epistles he wrote thanking the church that sent him the love gift. And he says, I thank you for it, but not for that I needed the gift, but that because I know God will give you increase for your generosity. You, your giving will not go without his reward. He sees what you did. And, and he was always interested in the other persons experiencing the blessings that God had for them. So much so that we read that Paul the Apostle in the book of Acts says that he never, he never even would take from the churches that he pastored at. Even though last week we went over, it says, he says that if you preach the gospel, in verse 14 of John, uh, 1 Corinthians 9, he says, so also the Lord has directed that those who proclaim the gospel are to get their living from the gospel. It's, you know, correct. Like he said, he, and he quotes the, Old Testament verse in Deuteronomy about how even the, the, the ox, when it's, when it's doing the threshing, you don't muzzle it, you let it eat, because it's to partake of part of that which it is, is working to, to produce. He says, it's just, it's just right that the person who labors in the gospel gets their living from the gospel, and yet, for those of you who weren't with us, Paul says, yet I did not make use of this right. Verse 18, he said, he said, instead, I offered the gospel without charge. Now, do you guys know how he did that? Some of you do. You, you know, what, was, what did Paul do to, to meet his physical needs? How did he pay his bills, so to speak? Anyone remember what he did for, for a, an occupation? He made tents. He said he, he would make tents and, and uh, he, he would be a tent maker I, w- I would say tent maker by day and preacher by night, but that's not really correct. He would preach. I have a feeling he even preached while he sewed tents, you know, because people were coming to him and hearing him share the gospel in all different places. But he says that, you no, know, I, I like this for me personally because I guess because I get kind of turned off by those preachers on the television that are always begging for money. You turn it on and the whole program, you're like, when are they going to talk about Jesus? And it is like, it's like two minutes of Jesus and 28 minutes of begging for, for send in your, your gift to our ministry or we'll go off the air. I'm thinking, don't send it in. Let him go off the air. This guy's a crumb, you know? I mean, I, I, does it bother anyone else besides, I know I'm the pr- pastor, but it bugs me. So Paul saying that he preached the gospel for free without taking up offerings from, the only offering we see him take up is for the poor, to help the poor saints in Jerusalem. He did accept an offering, but you remember, he wrote ahead to that town that he was, he was on a missionary journey, and he wrote ahead to them, he said, you guys arrange the offering before I get there, so that when I get there, no one will feel like pressure. Oh, here's Paul now, now we gotta give. He said, you get it all done before I get there, and I'll just receive it from you, and take it on to the brethren in Jerusalem. So he didn't even want the, it's like he didn't want the message of the gospel connected to this plea for money. Like, because I listen to some of these guys on television, I think, God is broke. I'm pretty sure the way that guy talks, 
He's like, please give your money or God's going to go out of business. I'm like, God is not going out of business. You know, you giving your money is a, is a, is a, is a mark of respect between you and the Lord. When you honor the Lord with your giving, you're, you're saying, God, I honor you, the, my maker. You're saying, you deserve to ha come before all other things. And a tithe, by the way, a tenth, is, is literally carved out. Is, is the 10% that we are to honor the Lord with, is that to come from the last 10% of our, of our coffer? What, what, what does the Jewish culture say? The first, off the top. The, the, from the first fruit, you give to God and you say, thank you for what you've given me. I honor you with this. Now, we went over this last week, but for those who weren't with us, some folks don't realize, I, I get my living from the gospel. But, but the Levites, who also got their living in the Old Testament from the gospel, did the Levites have to tithe? Yes. The very guys that received from the people the tithes, they were required to tithe. How come I never hear them preachers talk about this? Because, no, honestly, you know, the preacher is supposed to tithe too. Because it's not a matter, you, you think, but you're just going to tithe? Yeah. And they go, well, you don't hardly get anything. How are you going to make it? I say, or they tell me this, I can't afford to tithe, Pastor. I tell them what I found out. I can't afford not to. Because whenever I honor the Lord, the Lord... He does cool things. I mean, it's that last, that last book of the Old Testament, Malachi. He says, there's one thing you get to test God in. Malachi 3.10, he says, he says, test me now in this, the Lord says. Honor me. Bring in the first fruits. No, bring in the tithe, the, the, the first tenth, and honor me and give to the, work, to the house of the Lord and see, he says, if I will not open the windows of heaven. And what's he going to do when they open? Pour out blessings on you until you have no more need. Now, anyone here up for blessings from God? Like open window from heaven, blessings come down till you have no more need. All your needs are met. Now, I didn't say all your wants. Let me get this straight here. Because, you know, we have this really carnal society. They're like, ooh, chi ching I'm going to give to God and get everything I want. No, you get what you need. Not, it doesn't say what you want. It says what you need. But all your needs will be met when you honor God. When you honor your maker, your maker knows how to take care of you. Don't forget that. And so, Paul says, even though I had the right to, to take from the gospel, I didn't make use of that right. Why? Why would Paul not use that right? He had the right to. He was, he was a minister of the gospel. He said, because he did not want to have this. Listen to this. He says, I don't, I, I, I don't want this... To, to be the, the thing they remember about me. That I did this because I had a, a stewardship that I'm getting paid to do this, so I have to do it. No, this way they'll remember I did this. I didn't get paid for it. I did it because I wanted to. Now, last week I shared, if there was any way the Lord supplied for me to make a living, and by the way, He has supplied many a time for our family, not from the church. Just to keep us going, we're like, Lord, you are so cool. You do so many cool miracles. People, you know, someone said, you could write a book. I said, not me. I'm not a good writer. My wife could write it. But, but there are so many things that the Lord has done for us. Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com, and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com. Mahalo, and God bless.